Hi friends, welcome back to our series of sessions on sensors and transducers. Today we shall be discussing on displacement transducers, which can be classified based on their resistance, change in variable resistance, variable capacitance, variable inductance, and variable reluctance type transducers. Let's understand one by one. The variable resistance transducers are one of the most commonly used types of transducers for measuring various physical quantities such as temperature, pressure, displacement, force, vibrations, etc. These transducers are usually used as the secondary transducers where the output from the primary mechanical transducer acts as the input for the variable resistance transducer. The output obtained from it is calibrated against the input quantity and it directly gives the value of the input. The variable resistance transducer elements work on the principle that the resistance of the conductor is directly proportional to the length of the conductor and inversely proportional to the area of the conductor. Thus, if L is the length of the conductor in meters and A is its area in square meters, then its resistance R is given by, R is equal to rho L by A, where rho is called the resistivity of the materials measured in ohm meters and is constant for a given material. Some of the most popular variable resistance transducers are sliding contact devices in which the variable resistance, uh, there is a long conductor whose effective length is variable. One end of the conductor is fixed while the position of the other end is decided by the slider or the brush that can move along the whole length of the conductor. The slider is connected to the body whose displacement is to be measured. When the body moves, the slider also moves along the conductor. So its effective length changes, due to which its resistance also changes. The effective resistance is measured at the resistance between the fixed position of the conductor and the position of the sliding contact. The value of the resistance is calibrated against the input quantity, whose value can be measured directly. One of the most popular sliding contact type of variable resistance transducer is the potentiometer. These devices can be used both for translational as well as rotational, that is angular measurement, angular displacement measurement. And coming to variable capacitance transducers, they work on the uh, principle based on the displacement measuring transducers in various ways. Capacitance is a function of effective area of conductor. The separation between the conductors and the dielectric strength of the materials, which is described by the equation C is equal to epsilon A by D, where epsilon is the dielectric constant, which is the permittivity of the dielectric medium, A is the area of the electrode, and D is the distance between the two parallel electrodes. If we see the working of these capacitor plates, there are three ways to change the capacitance. One is the changing the area between the two plates and then changing the distance between the two plates. And there is a changing in the solid dielectric constant between the electrodes, uh, which because of which the permittivity changes. One of the two electrodes is made fixed and the other is made movable or to measure the displacement. Displacement to be measured is applied to the movable plate as the plate moves the distance between the plates increases and this changes the capacitance measurement. Thus, the change in the capacitance will be the function of the displacement of the electrodes. That's how the changes the, that's how we measure the capacitance measurement. The capacitor plates are also measured by two concentric hollow metal cylinders, as we are seeing in the figure. The displacement to be measured is applied to the inner cylinder, which alters the capacitance as it moves to and fro of the thing. Then we have the level measurement example here. Both the electrodes are fixed, so the distance is constant. One electrode is dipped into the electrode, into the liquid, and another one is fixed to the wall of the tank. Another is fixed to the wall of the tank. One probe is here. As the liquid level increases, the permittivity changes because the permittivity of the liquid 
is different from the permittivity of the air that is inside. So as the permittivity of the medium changing between the two plates of electrodes, the capacitance changes. And that's how we measure the change in capacity. As the liquid level increases, the permittivity changes and thus the capacity capacitance changes. Then let's see what is the variable inductance transducer. Inductance transducers may be either the self-generating or the passive type. The self-generating type utilizes the basic electrical generator principle, which is nothing but a motion between a conductor and the magnetic field induces a voltage in the conductor, as we see in generator. The relative motion between the field and the conductor is supplied by changes in the measured quantity. An inductive electromechanical transducer is a device that converts physical motion, which is nothing but the position change into the change in inductance. That's how we normally use the variable inductance as the displacement transducers. So variable inductance and transducers can be classified as based on self-inductance and based on mutual inductance. Inductive transducers are mainly used for the measurement of displacement, which is measured, is arranged in a, to cause variation in any of the three variables that we are seeing, whether it is air coiled transducer for measurement of linear displacement. And then we have the iron cord. We have an iron cord coil used for the measurement of angular displacement. Yeah, that's what uh, we are seeing. Then as the number of turns are changed, then the self-inductance and the output also changes. So we have the inductance, the output is taken between the two. As the, it varies, then the output is proportional to the inductance, the self-inductance, which is happening because of the change in the number of the turns that we are taking. So we also have change in the self-inductance with change in perme permeability or permeability of the thing. Okay, this uh, which shows the principle of the variation of permeability causing a change in self-inductance. The iron core is surrounded by a winding. If the iron core is inside the winding, its permeability is increased and so is the inductance. When the iron core is moved out of the winding, the permeability decreases, resulting in the reduction of the self-inductance of the coil. This transducer also can be used. This is how it can be used for measuring the displacement. Then we have the variable reluctance type of transducer. It consists of a coil wound and a ferromagnetic core. The displacement which is to be measured is applied to the ferromagnetic target. The target does not have any physical contact with the core on which it is mounted. The core and the target are separated by an air gap, as we are seeing here. This is the air gap. The reluctance of the magnetic path is determined by the size of the air gap. The inductance of the coil depends on the reluctance of the magnetic circuits. When the target is near to the core, the length is small and therefore the self-inductance is large. But when the target is away from the core, the reluctance is large, resulting in smaller self-inductance value. Hence, the inductance of the coil is a function of the distance of the target from the core, that is the length of the air gap. Since it is the displacement which changes the length of the air gap, the self-inductance is a function of displacement, albeit a non-linear one. So that's all about the variable resistance type, variable capacitance type, variable inductance type, and the variable resistance type of transducers. Hope you have enjoyed the uh, session.